All right, God bless you. This is the servant of Jesus Christ, Robert Dunlap. We want to we 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 want to deal with a question we got. Deal with the question we got. You know, people are people are honest in heart. They're honest in their heart. They want to be saved. Some people want to be saved, and if they think that they're doing something, you know, it's an honest heart. Matter of fact, let, let me just read. Everybody's not no hypocrite. Some people want to be saved. We're going to read this. No, we're not going to call no name. No. But some people want to be saved. All right. This letter is dealing with, he said, or who, whoever it is said, I don't know who it is. It, it don't give a name. It just give some initials. But they asked, if you can do a video for me, maybe they both will believe the truth. This video is dealing with marriage, divorce, first wife divorce, first husband divorce, first marriage is the divorce. Now you're in the second marriage, some even in the third marriage, some in the fourth marriage. All the marriages ended in divorce, but now you're in a new marriage. And they want to be saved and they want to know the truth. We're going to give you the truth. Want you to, I heard a bishop say, I want you to forget everything you've been taught and hear the word of God. That's my instruction. Forget everything you've been taught, forget it. Now listen to the word of God. Praise God. Anyway. I'm going to read this question. It says, Praise the Lord. I came into the knowledge of the truth after having been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. I'm from an apostolic church. I was taught that my first wife and I are unequally yoked because she was not saved. Yeah. Hold it. I want to deal with that part first. I want to deal with that part. Uh -uh. I want to deal with unequally yoke. Let's see what the Bible says about unequally yoke. I want the book of Corinthians, I believe. It. And I think I want the... Let's see what the Bible says. Unlegally yo, let deal let deal with that first. And, and, I, and I, I, uh, you know, if people not married, that's unequally yoked. If they're not married, but they are unequally yoked. Let me get this. Here it is. Let's see what the Bible says about unequally yoke. The Bible. 
get your Bible to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And we're going to begin with uh, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Let's look at what the Bible says in our Libra Yoke. Praise God. Let's look at what the Bible says. Forget what you've been taught. All you watching me, forget everything you've been taught and hear the word of the Lord. What do the Bible say about our Negro yoke? It's people that's not married. That's our Negro yoke. It's people that's married. That's our Negro yoke. In 2 Corinthians, get the Bible and read it together. Here's what the Bible say about our legal yoke. Because your wife ain't saved and you say y'all are legally yoked. Well, let's see what the Bible says. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. Be read with us. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. It is saying it is saying nothing about marriage, did it? Read. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? Read. And what communion have light with darkness? Read. And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? Read. For ye, 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 ye are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And, and, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Come out from among them. What then? What then? If y'all leave with your, you show sure enough need to come out from among them. Back up. Here's the them. What car call how, how, how Christ would bail or belial? Dog and light have no fellowship. Wait a minute. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? In one verse, you say, How can two walk together except they agree? We better get that. What you doing in false church? What you doing bowing to idols? What you doing serving Baal? What what you doing in the mosque? Uh huh. Uh huh. What you doing among antichrists that don't believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? How can two walk together except they agree? Here's a summary from AP News. Celebrating marriage. How can two walk together unless they are agreed? After seven years of being married, the verse in the Bible from Amos chapter 3, verse 3. How can two walk together unless they... Amos 3, 3. Amos 3, 3. Well, uh, take time to give you what the Bible said. Amos 3, 3. Go to the book of Amos 3 and verse 3. Yeah. 
<laughs> Here we are. Amos 3 and 3. Watch it. Watch it. Amos 3 and verse 1. Get it and read it with the Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquity. Can two walk together except they? Except they be agreed Will a lion roar in the forest When he have no prey Will a young lion cry out of his dead If he have taken nothing Can a bird fall in a snap upon the earth Where no gin is for him Shall one take up a snap from the earth And have taken nothing at all Shall a trumpet be blown in the city And the people not be afraid Shall there be evil in the city And the Lord have not done it Surely the Lord would do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servant the prophet. The lion had roared, who would not fear? The Lord God had spoken, who can but who can but prophesy? Publish in the passes of, of uh, 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 Ashdod, in the passes of the land of Edom, and say, Assemble yourself into the mountain, and behold a great uh, uh, and behold a great tumult in the midst thereof. And the oppressed in the midst of all. For they know not to do right, said the Lord, who store violence and robbery in their palaces. Therefore, does that Lord, and every servant shall be evil around about the land, for he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. This is what God going to do because of your iniquity. You disobeyed him. How could two walk guests have their grief? That's what you just read. Well, you never read a day in your life. You never read that before. Now, this is not to the letter, the one that wrote me a letter. This is not to you what I just read. I'm just giving so others can understand. You, you see that? Now, and that's the truth there. Temple of Baal. What you doing sitting up there whispering Baal? What you did is doing sitting up there agreeing with false doctrine and working false doctrine. Lord, you've ruined me. Now you see how can two two all girls sit there agree. Now you see now you now you see what that means? Any of y'all agree with false doctrine and false prophecy, false God. Not just agreeing with it, you doing it. You sure you agree with it because you doing it, because you serve another God. Whew. Let me not get off subject. That be not only ugly yoke with our believers. Praise God. That would that be if that didn't say nothing about no marriage. Did it? All right. My God. All right, that, 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 that's good stuff there, boy. That's good stuff there. Now we see what unequally yoke, what the Bible says about unequally yoke, yeah, what I believe. Now get the rest of it. I was taught that my first wife and I were unequally yoked because she was uh, uh, not saved. However, my first wife and I remarried. I've stopped committing adultery, but my second wife hold to this doctrine. My first wife believed the word of God when I gave her the truth, but went and talked to her for a prophet and stole the word from her. If the Lord come and I'm still there preparing to leave, then I will not be caught up with him in the air as the saints. And that's a question. If I die not having left my second wife, not touching her, would I go to the lake? 
Can my first wife and I get back together without getting divorced from our second adultery marriages? Please pray for me. All right. Let's deal with the first wife and second wives. I'm going to take you, go to Corinthians chapter 7. Let's see exactly what the scriptures say. We want to see exactly what it said. Then we're going to go and take you to what Jesus said. Go to Corinthians chapter 7. First Corinthians chapter 7. Let's see exactly what it says. In the seventh chapter of, 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 of uh, First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter seven, read with us. Go down to verse number ten. Verse number ten. And unto the marriage I command, yet not I but the Lord. Just the Lord talking. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Why? Don't you leave your husband. Watch it. Remember, this is the Lord talking. Ugh. He said, I ain't saying this, but in verse 10. Until the marriage I command, yet not I but the Lord. This is the Lord talking here. Let not the wife depart from the husband. What else did the Lord say? Ah, oh, woo, woo, I got word of wisdom and knowledge going forth. God knows. Yeah. But if she depart, the law said, Jesus said, but don't depart, uh, uh, don't depart your husband. But if you depart, that what the law said. What did the law say? Let her remain unmarried. If the law said that not, if you do the part remain on man. Watch it. Or be reconciled to her hood. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. And let not the hood put away his wife. That's the law talking there. Don't be put away your wife. Wife, don't leave your hood. Hub, don't put away your wife. Uh huh. How do how y'all see that? How do y'all see that? Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Break that. Break that. Break that. Break Now. Now, verse 12, which the Lord did address. You go back and be reconciled to her, but you remain unmarried. That's what the Lord said. Or be reconciled to her. Now, it's something that the Lord didn't address directly, but he did address it. And I'm going to show you too. Verse 12. But the rest be God. The rest of it, this me talking here. And he, Paul ain't saying nothing contrary to what Jesus said. The rest be God, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believe not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. She don't believe. That's all. If she if she ain't saved, if first wife ain't saved, second wife ain't saved, third wife ain't saved, 
as she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. If she be pleased to dwell with him, don't put her away. And a woman that have a husband that believe it not, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Though they, though they ain't saved. I don't care what you said. Some of these unsaved wives are treating better than some of these talking to talk folk. Uh-oh, uh oh. Uh -uh. Well, I guess I better leave that alone. Some of you folks that say you ain't saved, they'll treat you better than the one that's talking to some kind of talk. Glory. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right, all right. It, it did deal with, it, it, it did deal with marriage. But we're going to show you, the Lord did address this. Watch it. Verse 15. But if the unbeliever depart, a brother and sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God had called us to peace. God didn't call none of y'all to, to, to stay in places where you mistreated, in marriages where you mistreated and abused. God had called us to peace. Now here's the thing. What knoweth thou, old wife, whether thou shalt say thy husband? Or what knoweth thou, old man, whether thou shalt say thy wife? It's a it, it's a lot of places where the say wife and say husband they had unsay husband and wife how and they stayed together praise God and he continued to give her the word praise God and give him the word praise God and they say because they heard the word that they husband priest or they white priest they heard the word. <sighs> But I believe it. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. But I believe it. But I believe her is sanctified by the wife, and I believe, believe why he's sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. They holy because they heard the word of God. That's, that's why they holy, because they heard the word of God. But if they are believing the part, let him depart. A brother and sister not on the body of such kingdom, God have called us to peace. Now let me show you what Jesus addressed there. Let me show you. What Jesus addressed there. Yeah, your wife will leave you. Think not. That I have come to bring peace, but I come to bring a sword. According to Connect US, Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, meaning of I did not. Let go to Matthew 10, 34. Let me show you, let me show you what Jesus addressed is too. But he addressed it in a different context. And we'll come back to the straight man which he addressed, put away your wives and all that. Uh, uh, Matthew 10, 34. Jesus addressed that. Matthew 10, 34. Look what Jesus said. To read with the Think not that I have come to bring sin peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. I have come to send a man and various against his father. And the daughter against her mother. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemy, a man's foe, shall be they of his own house. You see what Jesus addressed that? Wait a minute. We ain't through yet. Go to Mark. I think I want nine. Yeah, Lord. Whoo, glory. 
Man, this is good. Mark 9. I think that's what I want. Matter of fact, let me, let me do this. Let me pull it up. You know, I know what to tell Google. Lord, we left all to follow you. Yay! I tell you what, uh, Matthew 19, 27. Matthew 19 and 27. <laughs> Yay! Hallelujah. <laughs> look at look at what look at what look at look at look at read Matthew 9 to his head did Peter did as Peter said unto him behold we have forsaken all and follow thee what shall we have therefore look at what Jesus said and Jesus said unto him brother brother I say unto you that ye which have followed me in in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye all shall say, sit upon twelve thrones, judge the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, brethren, sisters, Father, mother, all wife. Now what's he saying? All children, all lands, for my name's sake. That means they, they didn't want to be saved. In the sword came, and they didn't want to be saved. Yes, in some cases, you got to forsake them. They holding you back. They killing you. They fight you. They going to bring you, sometimes they tell you, I, I, I believe you because I don't want to be married to no preacher. I don't want to be married to no saint. I'm leaving you. We can't go clubbing no more. I'm leaving you. You don't drink. You ain't no far no more. We need to have a good time at the casino, get drunk, smoking dope. Yeah, <laughs> that what Jesus said for my name's sake. That be for the gospel. They don't want to go. You gotta, you gotta go anyway. Forsake them. Leave it all to follow Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah! You gotta forsake them. <laughs> God, woo! My God, the Holy Ghost moving. He that hated not his mother and his father is not where he'll be. According to Hall City. Luke chapter 14 verse 26 If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters yea and his own life also he cannot be my disciple. <laughs> you heard it. And she said scripture. See that? You heard that scripture? Wait a minute. Wait, wait. We better we better give you book chapter verse on that. We better give you book chapter verse. That Luke chapter 14, verse 26. You see that? Hallelujah. Holy. Hallelujah. Glory. All right. My God today. Hallelujah. All right. Go back to go to Corinthians. Frank Reed chapter 6. Well, but we just gave scripture. You already see. Now, in the, I think the 15th chapter of the book of Romans, let's get this. Notice we read scripture. 
We ain't giving you nothing else. I think in the 15th chapter. I think. Maybe I'm wrong. But when the husband is dead, she is free to marry whomever she will. Corinthians 7. That's 739. We, okay. Go back to Corinthians 7. I, I, I thought that was it. That's all right. Corinthians 739. Go back to Corinthians. Pray Corinthians 739. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Corinthians 739. The wife, read, the wife is bound by the law of her husband. That be white and hub. Y'all still together. And law is a hub believe. But if a hub be dead, she is at liberty to marry whom she will, only in the law. That's not rocket science. You bow by a law of your husband. And law is he live. Praise God. I look like it's another, another on that dealing with the church. See, 39 eight. Look like it's another. Let's see. Romans 7 and 2. I, I knew it seemed like it was another one. Romans 7 and 2. Praise God. See if that's it. See if that's it. Oh, it seemed like it wasn't. Yeah, there, there, there. There, there. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. How did the law have had to be an old man long as he lived? For the woman which has a hood. Which have a husband, you have a husband. You ain't got no divorce husband. You ain't separated from your husband, but you have a husband. Y'all still together. A woman that have a husband is bound by a law of a husband as long as he living. But if a husband be dead, she is loose from the law of a husband. So then, if why her husband living, she be married to another, she shall be called. And a dungeon. That's right. You hub a living and you go marry somebody else. You a dungeon. So the the word the word the, the word die is bigger man. You ain't divorced. Watch it. But if a hub is dead, she is free from that law. So that she is no longer in no judgment, though she be married to another man. And they go on talking about and, and all down read all down that they that compare it to the law and Christ. Christ is the law. You ain't on the law no more. That's what they were referring to. All right. We're going a little long with that. My God, my, my God, this is good. Now, let's go to what is a dungeon? Let's start that. I woke the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew. Let's see what Jesus said a dungeon is. Matthew 5. Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 27. Look what Jesus said. Ye have heard that it was said by them of all. Read with us. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What is adultery? But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery already in his heart. 
if you look on a woman to lust out the hook. If you marry to look on a woman to lust out the hook, it's a dud. If she marry to look on the man to lust after him, it's a dud. I don't care if the man married or not married, it's still a dud. Uh huh. What verse say, don't cover to your neighbor's wife. That's a dud. Don't cover his lock of his ass. Now, stay in fine. Here, here we are. See all that go together. See, see all that go together. Not go, not go to thirty one. You go, you all know. If your right hand offend you, hallelujah. If your right eye offend you, all that talk about a dutch. It been said, whosoever put away his wife, let him give her a right to the woman, and that's in the book of Deuteronomy. But I say to you, watch this, that whosoever shall put away his wife, save it for the cause of the case, for that cause, except for that cause. Praise God. Now, now, now Jesus not, is not dealing with you beating your wife and you abusing your wife and you kicking the children and giving your black, white, black eyes. He ain't talking about that. Say except for the cause of the case. I was like, well, you can't, can't nobody commit for the case. No, no, no. A, a psycho person can't commit for the case. Yes, they can. If a single man screw your wife, your wife could be in fornication with that single man. And a dutch. If a, if, your, if a single woman sleep with a married man, that married man could have committed a dutch and fornication. It's the same act. <laughs> The scriptures say he that is joined to a harlot is one flesh. If you sleep with a hoe, you commit fornication. The hoe ain't man. Uh huh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Watch this. If he, hey! Hallelujah. Save for that cause, cause your wife took a bill of drugs. Now this put it away. This is put it away. Watch it. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, Camille Dutch. Now what's that about? Then David, how did David get with Bathsheba? Number one, he could be a Dutch. By looking on her and lusting out her. <laughs> Didn't he do it? Then he wanted to, wanted to make it good and legal. Instead of him, now you're right, they know nothing about his wife cheating with David. But he wants to make this thing legal. Let's make this legal life. So he going to have a hub and kill. Not, not get, not divorced. Not the hub divorce the ride the ride divorce uh Bathsheba uh divorce your ride or your ride divorce Bathsheba, but let go let's take it further. Let's have him uh, David, I'm gonna have him killed so I can so I can have his wife. Same thing apply. He wants to have your ride killed so he can have his wife and so the situation can be here. He wants to have your ride killed. You want the main wife. You already, you already know that she married. You was already with her. Don't let me pull your card. How many of y'all know people? They, I can call them day. They say, I'll marry you, but I got to divorce my husband first. 
I'll marry you, so I'm going to divorce my wife and I'm going to marry you. Same thing. You already would. You already got it. You already got it. I know, I know, I, shh, Lord. I know one who white was on her deathbed. And the woman went and asked the wife if she could marry her husband when she died. That's adultery. Uh huh. You're doing it. Now both of them got, got married, and, and you and your wife got married, and, and married, and both got children, and all that kind of thing. And you divorce. That's adultery. And, and if that, what we read about, if that was your case, I'm sure you repented. God forgive you for doing that. Pray, God will forgive you. But you, you and your wife, you and your first wife, or first husband, y'all divorced. Y'all ain't no longer one flesh. If they twain shall be one flesh, let nobody put asunder. Y'all put asunder. I'm going to read some message I'll be through with. Go back to Corinthians. Chapter 7. Verse 27. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. But if thou marry, thou have not sinned. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. And if a virgin marry, she have not sinned. Why are you seeking to be loose? I know y'all don't like the truth. Some of y'all need to be loose. That woman in that bank giving you hell. Some of y'all being abused. You need to be loose. Some of y'all are married sissies. You found out your wife was a lesbian. You need to be loose. Your, yeah, your husband they found out he abused your children sexually, molest your children. You need to be loose. That's enough. That's enough. We just read what the Bible said. It did add nothing to it. Thank you for hearing.